You serve a, a great God. You serve a holy God. If you serve an awesome God, come on, you ought to clap your hands and praise Him. You ought to clap your hands and give Him the glory. Glory to your name, Jesus. There's none like you. There's none beside you. Glory. Your God, your God all by yourself. Nobody can do like you do. Nobody is a God like you are. And you're all one. Thank you, Jesus. We, we honor the Lord tonight. This afternoon, God is certainly a great God, and he's certainly worthy to be praised. You know, we're crazy for Jesus. Amen. We're, I don't know about you, but I'm crazy about him. Amen. That's why I praise him the way I do. And I don't care who looking at me, I still going to praise my God. Hallelujah. Amen. We certainly give him the praises, the honor for being God, being God all by himself. He's the only wise, true, and living God. Amen. And he carries the name Jesus to salvation. Amen. Certainly thank God for, amen, my pastor and spiritual father, Apostle C.A. Coward. Thank God to the presiding bishop, Bishop Ira J. McLeod to the Board of Bishops, to the Overseer of the New North District, our Bishop, Bishop Kevin Williams. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for our District Elder, District Elder Andrew Johnson. <laughs> Amen. To each and every one of you, all of our first-time guests, we thank God for you all. Amen. Coming to be with us today. Amen. You could have went anywhere else, but you decided to join us today, and we're so grateful that you are here. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you uh, from this message. Amen. Learn how to treat God. Amen. Uh, learn how to treat God. First thing I want you to understand is, is that God 
is a God that has feelings. God has feelings just like you got feelings. And you know how if somebody treats you funny, you start acting funny. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And not only if somebody treats you funny, some of y'all, if somebody look at you funny, you start looking funny. Mm -hmm. Amen. Y'all talk to me in here. Amen. So we have to learn how to treat God and learn how not to treat God. Amen. Can I tell you something? God ain't like your boyfriend. You don't get mad at him and ignore him. God ain't like your girlfriend. Y'all ain't saying nothing. God ain't like your wife or your husband. When you get mad, you don't want to cook. You get mad, you don't want to. Y'all ain't, why y'all ain't saying nothing? <laughs> you know how it happens, you get into an uh, issue, an argument, a fuss, a discussion, amen. And when you have these discussions, or arguments, debates, you get in your what? Feelings. Amen. amen. And if we go to the book of Hebrews chapter 4, I want y'all to see this. Hebrews chapter 4 and 15 is very vital that we understand how God operates. And there was one of my favorite people in the Bible is David. Mm -hmm. And the reason why David is one of my favorite people in the Bible is because he knew how to treat God. He knew how to talk to God. And if you ever want to learn how to talk to God, if you ever want to learn how to deal with God, you might want to go down there and see what David did. Amen. Because David is a prime example on how he treated God because he understood the feelings that God had. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. All right. Give me 4 and 15 of Hebrews. Uh -huh. For we have not in high priest. For we have not. In high priests, which cannot be touched, which cannot be touched with the feeling, with the what feeling, feeling of our infirmities. Of our infirmities. Now, first thing we got to understand is the reason why God has feelings is because of one of the main reasons He has feelings and deal with us the way He deal with us, different than the way He dealt with them in the Old Testament, is because He put Himself in a body. And see, when God put himself inside of a body, he said, now I could understand how to relate. So he could now have feelings or deal with people. Let me show you this. Go down to the first Timothy chapter 3. I want to show you all this. Amen. First Timothy chapter 3 and 16. And I, and I, I realize that, amen, uh, I realize that people don't comprehend or don't understand how to treat God because they don't know that he was placed in a body as a human. Amen. 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 Let me show you this. Go down to the first Timothy chapter six, uh, three and verse number 16. Uh-huh. And without controversy. And without controversy. Great is the mystery of God. He said, there is a mystery behind who God is. Uh-huh. Read. God was manifest in the God flesh. was what? Manifest. God was manifest in the what? Flesh. So God put on a body. And so when he put this body on, he said, you know what? I'm going to get in the body so I could feel what you feel. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. see, and people don't understand. They say, well, is that the same God that was in the Old Testament? Because Old Testament God, he was killing folks. Mm -hmm. People don't even read that. They know about the loving God and the Jesus that don't they never bother nobody. But there is a God in the Old Testament scriptures that show now he got somebody that was picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. And when they was picking up sticks, the commandment was to kill him for ki picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. Come on. Oh, y'all ain't talking. Y'all must don't read your Bible. <laughs> Another thing is, is that a woman that was that had sex before she was married and they found out they would stone her and yes, kill her yes sir amen amen oh my same god yes but then in hallelujah the gospels jesus put on a body yes and he said oh hold, hold on now i, I got to i got to reconstruct some of these things so now you got a woman same law 
The woman was caught in adultery. And they said, oh, we about to kill her. We got her. She, she, she just got a, a bunch of the different men. She doesn't know. And Jesus got down and started riding in the dirt. Yes. Instead of killing her, he said, now just depart and sin no more. The same God. Well, why didn't he tell them to kill him like the commandment said in the Old Testament? Because he put on a robe of flesh. Yes. Go down into John chapter 1. The Bible said that he was in uh, uh, flesh and, and, and people didn't even recognize who he was. Then we're going to go to Philippians chapter 2. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. John 1. And one, uh-huh, read. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. Uh-huh. And the Word was God. Yes. The same was in the beginning with God. Uh-huh. All things were made by him. All things were made by him. And without him. And without him. Was not anything made. There was nothing was made. made without God. And then the Bible says down in the 10th verse, read, uh-huh. He was in the world. He, the God. That made, the, and, and see, this, we don't get this thing because it can be too complex for the mind. Yes. We don't understand that there's a God that lived outside of the universe, yes, put on a body, and yes, walked and talked like we do. Yes. And because he walked and talked like we do, now he said, I got, I got feelings now. Yes. Oh, God, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. See, in the Old Testament scripts, it wasn't about feelings. It was about ownership mm. and companionship. See, in the Old Testament scriptures, you ain't even have to love your wife. That's right. Now, y'all don't read the Bible. That's true. You don't have to let, see what happened was they were, and this is still a custom in the Middle Eastern today. They, the father and the mother or father and father will meet somebody and say, oh, that's a good one for my son. Oh, yeah. that's a good one for my daughter. And they will put them together. Right. See, if you read your Bible, you'll see in the book of Deuteronomy that the man, he just ain't even like the woman. <laughs> he wanted to divorce her because he didn't like her. Because they didn't put each other together for likes or dislikes. But when the New Testament came, he says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved. Love ah. Yes, sir. So now Christ had a love. For, see, oh God, Israel, when God, with Israel, it wasn't really about love. It was companionship. Yes, come on. Oh God. See, 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 they, they was cheating on God. You know, the, uh, he said, uh, oh, backslide in Israel, return, return, come on back to me. Because of a covenant. Yes. And because, y'all ain't saying nothing. Yes. Because it was a companionship. But now, he said, now for this new bride that I got, I'm going to die for him. Lord, have mercy. This, this, this new. See, when you get all in your feelings, you'll, you'll kill somebody about you. Y'all ain't saying, God, I wish I had the right church with me. So, so he said, he said, now I, I'm going to put on this body and I'm going to die for the new woman that I want. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So he had to get him a new woman called the church today. The church is, is God's new woman. And see, God got feelings about you. This is why when you're trying to leave him, you can't sleep at night because he started messing your mind up. He said, I, I don't want you to fall asleep. I want you to talk to me. That's why you're twisting and turning at night. You can't even go to sleep because God wants you to talk to him. Oh, God. God wants you to speak to him because he in his feelings. Oh, God. Lord, let me take this jacket off. It's, it's getting a little warm now. So, 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 so the way God operates, he said, now, I, I like this woman here because this woman, they come to a place and they praise and worship me and they cry out to me. See, Israel, they had a little problem. They wanted to go to different places to worship God that God didn't call them to worship at. Oh, Lord, I wish I had a few of y'all with me. All right. Now, read. What, what, what did he say? Uh-huh. He was in the world. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. And the world didn't know him. So we're talking about the God that entered into the world and the world didn't know him. This is why it's very important that we as the church get to know him. Amen. You take all that time out trying to look at people's profile and all this stuff to find you somebody, you better find God. Spent all night on Twitter trying to talk about you trying to find somebody. My God. Oh, y'all ain't saying much. But we need to get to know him so we can learn how to treat him. Yes. And can I be honest with you? We don't know how to treat God because we don't know him. Oh, 
God. I listen to some people, they can quote and they can call out every basketball player on every team. Know they stats? Know who's better than who? On all sports. Basketball, football, hockey, all of it. They know everything about everything. But they don't know God. Haven't took the chance to get to learn him. And see, when we don't learn him, we don't understand how to operate with him. See, he said, I want you to learn of me. Watch this. Go down there to Matthew chapter uh, 11. Matthew 11 and 28. Hallelujah. Got there working. All right, read. Uh -huh. Come unto me. Come unto me. All ye that labor. I want you to come unto me. Uh-huh. And are heavy laden. Yes. And I will give you rest. I'm going to give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. And learn. And what? And learn. learn. I got to learn them so I can know how to treat him. Amen. We don't treat them good because we haven't learned them good enough. See, reason why you treat Jesus like that because you don't know that he's God. Uh, oh, my God. I'm about to mess up now. Give me that uh, Philippians chapter 2. My God. Philippians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Start at verse number 3, I think it is. Uh-huh. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Jump down to five. Uh -huh. Let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Which was also, now he's talking about the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Read. Who being in the form of God. Who being in the, I love this scripture. Because he said that Jesus was in the form of God. That's right. Hallelujah. Now, ice is a form yes. of water. My God. Steam is a form of the same H2O. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, God. It's the same substance, just in a different form. Lord, you got water down there at the creek. They call it the creek, but it's still water. You got the Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But it's still water. Yes. You got some water that be running down there and they call it a river. Uh -huh. But it don't change that it's water. Yes. My God. Then you got a little pond out there in your backyard. It's called a pond. But it's still water. And you put somebody in the pool, they call the pool swimming in it. Ah, but it's still water. God was in the form of man. Still God, just in a different. Uh, I wish I had 25 of y'all. All right, read, uh-huh. Thought it not robbery. Thought it not robbery. To be equal with God. There is nobody in the world that's equal to God except himself. <laughs> There's no one that's equal to God because if there was somebody that was equal to him, he would not be God. Oh, God. I'm about to get in trouble here. <laughs> I'm about to preach to myself ahead of day. God, he said, he said he was formed in the form of God and thought of not robbery to be equal with God. God only can equal himself. Y'all yes. did math class but before. There's only one God. We already know how, what one time one is. One. We know every number needs one except one. <laughs> oh, can y'all can hear what I said? Every number needs one except one. I'll let it marinate just for a few minutes. All right. Read, uh-huh. But made himself. But made him. Now, this is the part why people don't know how to treat God because they don't understand that when God placed himself in a body on the earth, he did not have a reputation. Oh, my God. He didn't walk around with his shoulders <laughs> wide and broad saying, I'm God. Yes. Come on. Hallelujah. He didn't put on a robe and say, I'm God. Get on out the way. Amen. 
He didn't have everybody saying, hell Jesus, hell Jesus. He's coming, hell Jesus, hell Jesus. He didn't do all of that because he was only going to be in that body for a short period of time. And he didn't want you to go looking for the man. Oh, God. This is why he always pointed to the Father. He said, I'm going to point to the spiritual me because when I die, I don't want you to come looking for me. My God, I wish I had a few folks in here with me. He, he always said, I want you to pray to our Father in heaven. He would say, well, how in the world can he be God in the flesh and praying to God in heaven? Because he didn't want you going down there to Jerusalem looking for him. Y'all ain't talking. He didn't want you down there digging up graves trying to find out where Jesus is at. That's why he always pointed to himself in the spirit form. Then he would mess around and put on in the Bible in the book of Psalms. He said, all flesh got to pray. If you're in a flesh body. And then see, God. And this scripture shows us that he had to be obedient to whatever he commanded. Because the Bible said that he had to fulfill all righteousness. Ah, I wish I had the right church today. Read, uh-huh. And took upon him. Took upon him. The form of a servant. He took upon him the form. Now watch this. He's a form of God as a form of a servant. Mm -hmm. So God came down to serve. Yes, amen. Yes. And your proud self don't want to serve nobody. Yeah. Oh, Lord, let me get off of that. Read, uh-huh. And was made in the likeness of men. And he was made, my God. He was made in the what? The likeness. likeness of who? Men. If he was made in the likeness of men, then that obviously means that he wasn't a man. Mm, come on, that's good. Oh, my God. Woo, that's good. If he was made like a man, then he couldn't have been a man. So that means that that man that you was taught that was in heaven, it was no man in heaven. Bible says in the book of John 4, 24, God is a spirit. Down there, number said God is not a man, but God put on a man's body. Yes. See, the man, hallelujah, we don't, we, we don't define God by the man. Yes. Come on. That's why he said God was in Christ. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. All right, let me move along. Read, uh-huh. And being found in fashion as a man. And then he fashioned himself. <laughs> My God. He said, now, if I'm going to be a man, I might have a little fat. I want to be my, I'm going to be a man. I'm, I'm just going to come down here and look like somebody. Yes. Lord, have mercy. Read, uh-huh. He humbled himself. He humbled himself. Why did he have to humble himself? Because he was God. Mm, my God. He had to be God if he had to humble himself. He humbled himself. Why he got to humble himself? And then the Bible said he had to be obedient. What? Why would they say he got to be obedient? Because he was God and made every commandment. Oh, God, I wish I had the right church. Read, uh-huh. And became obedient. And became obedient unto what? Death. Wait a minute. <laughs> he became obedient to death because as a spirit, he cannot die. Oh, glory to God. So he cannot die as God. So he had to become obedient to death. Oh, my God. So, so this is why the scripture said he had to be obedient to death, even the death of the what? Because he was God. And the only way that God could die is by putting on a flesh body that can die because as God, spirit cannot die. So as God, he had to be obedient to death. What you mean I got to obey death? Because obeying death wasn't in his book. And obeying death wasn't in his uh, uh, characteristic. It wasn't in his trait. It wasn't something that God could do. He was the creator of everything. In fact, God is in control of death. So because he's in control of it, that's why the Bible said he had to become obedient. Somebody shout hallelujah. He had to be obedient to death because he could not die. Spirit can't die. 
And this is why when people do die, there is eternity after what because this is what dies, but the you don't die. Amen. Same concept with God. It was the flesh that died. It wasn't the soul. Because soul can't die. Oh my. Spirit can't die. <laughs> God. Somebody lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Watch this now. This is my favorite part here. Read, uh-huh. Wherefore. Now, I got to explain this, that, that God was placed in the body so you could understand the concept of how to deal with God. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to deal with God, just like you got feelings, I have to understand that he has feelings too because he was in the same body. Mm -hmm. So just like you cry, he cried. Amen. Oh, Y'all yeah. didn't know he cried? Ooh, Jesus. I mean, one of the shorter scriptures in the Bible said Jesus. Jesus wept. <laughs> Jesus wept. And then Jesus got in his feelings before. He saw that he was about to die. And he said, whoa. See, I'm not used to this death stuff. Mm -hmm. He started thinking about that thing. He said, whoa. So what happened was the flesh started to kick in. And when that flesh kicked in, he said, whoa. Well, not, not my will then, uh, meaning the flesh. But it's the will of the God that's in me. Yes, it does. Because if Jesus didn't die, you wouldn't have no relationship with him anyway if you got one. <laughs> Amen. And we know everybody said they got a relationship with him, but we about to find out today. Mm, my Lord. How you treat God shows if you really have a genuine relationship with him. If you only talk to him once a week, every other, every other year, I don't, I don't know what kind of relationship that is. And see, the relationship that we, we, we want to have with God is on a uh, scale of being intimate with him. Now, if I have that type of relationship with God, then this is something that I long for because I want to be closer to him. So when I talk, and you can tell people that got a relationship with God and who don't. Think about these wives that got good husbands. They always talking about them. Child, my husband bought me this. Child, my I love my husband. I love me some, what they say, I love me some him. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I love me some him. He does this for me, he does that. So you start bragging on him based upon the relationship that you have with him. Some of y'all haven't bragged on Jesus in years. Oh, my. Well, Pastor, he didn't buy me no car, but he woke you up. He ain't do nothing. That, well, your, your heart's still beating. That's still something. You, you know what, child? Guess what? I woke up this morning. I'm in my right mind. I'm not down there at Georgia Regional. Y'all ain't saying nothing. My heart is still beating. My lungs are functioning. The blood is pumping in my veins. I'm bragging on the God that I serve. We don't get to that place. He got to buy you a car for you to brag on. You got to get a raise on your job for them to brag on you. Oh, God, I knew you would do it. I, that 50 cent, Lord, I knew, I knew you was going to do it. <laughs> Bragging on that 50 cent, but you won't brag on the life that he gave you. When you know you was the one that was driving drunk and you, oh, God, I'm about to get into something now. You was the one that was supposed to die. You was out there in the shootout when you called yourself gangbanging and you heard pop, 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 people around you die, but you're still here. It was because of the grace of God. God, you ain't got to give me no car, but I'm thankful that I'm still alive. Out of all the kids in your family, you got an opportunity to go to college. Oh, God, y'all ain't saying that. Out of all the people in your family, you're the one with a career job. Thank you, Lord. Out of all the people in your family, you're the only one in your right mind. Oh, my God. And you can't give God glory because of that. You need some grand, nice car, house, 
some extra money testifying about income tax. That ain't money that you get. That's what you. That, that, that's what they took. Lord, have mercy. God don't bless me with this nice five thousand dollars. They took it from you. They just gave it back to you. But that's what we get excited about. But we don't have joy in our soul and joy in our heart for him waking us up. Because you think it's that alarm clock that woke you up. But what about the times when you beat the alarm clock? Oh, my. Y'all ain't saying nothing. What about those times when the alarm clock ain't go off yet and you woke up? Who was that? What was that? Let me get out of there. Read, uh huh. Wherefore, Wherefore, God also hath uh -huh. highly exalted him, exalted the flesh, uh -huh. and given him a name, and given him a name. Now, this is the part that messes me up, Frankie. He gave him a name that's what? Which is above every name. Now, if he gave a name that's above every name, then that means we know that God has a name because God is not a name. So God is not a name, and if God is not a name, then what is his name? My God, yes. And then he said he gave him a name that was above every name. Read, uh-huh. That at the name of Jesus. That at the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow. Every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven. Wait a minute. So you telling me that whoever was in this flesh body got enough power that people in heaven got to bow down to him? <laughs> what, what kind, who was this? Who was this person that the people now? We know that the Bible said now, the Bible said heaven is God's throne and earth is his what? So if he got a foot, surely he going to have a knee. Oh, my God. I wish I had the right church with me today. Everybody got feet. They got to have something connected to that foot. You know the little song they used to say, the neck bone connected to the shoulder bone. Y'all you know what I'm talking about. So now if I got a foot, it got to be connected to something. So if there is knees in heaven, every knee got to bow. Who got that much power to make things in heaven bow down? Now, here's the thing. In the book of Exodus, it shows that God is a jealous God. Meaning that if there's anybody that called himself a God or if there's an angel that bowed down to it, it causes a separate God. Yes, sir. And he said, I don't want you to have no other gods before me. So if the things in heaven are bowing down to Jesus, he has to be God. Because God wouldn't say anything contrary to himself. Leave your finger there. Give me Exodus chapter 20. I'm about to get y'all out of here. I just want to show y'all how y'all must treat God in order to treat him. Y'all got to know who he is. You got to know that he was in the flesh body. That's how he could connect with you. Amen. Read, uh-huh. 20 and 3. Exodus. Thou, thou shalt have no other gods. Thou shalt have no other gods. Before me. Before me. Read. Thou shalt not make unto thee uh -huh. any graven image uh -huh. or any likeness of anything that uh -huh. is in heaven above. Wait a minute. So then when he says, when it refers to heaven, I don't even want you to create anything that will have your mind to imagine that a God is. Wow. But then he tells you to bow down to this man. Mm. <laughs> and you in heaven? Go back to Philippians chapter 2. Come on. 2 and 10, uh-huh. That at the name of Jesus. That. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow uh -huh. of things in heaven yes. and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So now that every tongue got to confess that Jesus Christ is what? Lord. But then in Ephesians chapter 4, it said that there's only one Lord. <laughs> That's right. And he says, to the glory of God the Father. Now, we got to understand what the glory is. Mm -hmm. Come on. The glory is a covering. My God. All right. Let me get off. That might be too deep this morning. I can, I'm not going to go too far on that. That's too heavy. 
See, a glory is a covering of something that's in. All right, give me, give me the book of Colossians. Let me move forward. Colossians chapter 2. Thank you. I'm chapter 1. And I'm going to move forward because I got to get y'all how David, he, 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 he had a good little, he liked, he, he liked to treat God real nice. Amen. And see, can I be honest with some of us or some of you all today? Let me be honest with you. When mankind messes up, mankind has a tendency of running away from God. Amen. But David was the total opposite. He messed up and he fell on his face before God. Look, look, look listen, God. <laughs> I done, I, done, I done messed up. Now my, my sin forever uh, is ever before me. Yes. You know, I done transgressed. I done did this. But Lord, please don't take your spirit away from me. Read, uh-huh. Uh, 1 and 13, 14. In whom we have redemption. In whom blood. we have redemption through his what? Blood. Now, we know that we were redeemed by who blood? Jesus. There's a few of y'all know. I need to come to Sunday school a little bit. So we were redeemed by whose blood? Jesus. We was redeemed by Jesus' blood, right? So now he says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the what? Forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness of sin. Uh Uh-huh. Read. Who is the image? Who is the now this person that redeemed us from sin is an image. And in fact, I believe it's uh, Hebrews say he's the express image. Let me let, let, let me give you this real quick. Oh my God. Yes, Lord. Uh, is that Hebrews? Uh, give me. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody lift your hands and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Hebrews 1 and 3. Watch this. Who being the brightness of his glory. Who being the brightness of his what? Glory. Glory. Watch this. See, now the glory is the covering. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The glory is something that covered. Remember, the glory in the Old Testament was something that covered. Read, uh Mm uh-huh. And the express image. And the express image image of his person. Oh, wait a minute. (laughs) So God was a person, but he was an express image, meaning that he came quick. Meaning that if you did not see him or catch him, you might have missed him. He was the express image. (laughs) He got in there and got out of there. He was an expressed image. So who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his what? Person. Person. So Jesus was the person of God. And then in this same scripture context, the scripture tell you that they got the same name. Mm-hmm. Or the name that Jesus that uh, had when he had on the earth, right. father had it in heaven, he had it in his pocket. He had it in his back pocket because he knew he had to bring forth some salvation. So he got his name from his father. Read, uh-huh. <laughs> Keep reading this verse, uh-huh. And upholding all things by the word of his power. Uh-huh. When he had my, by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, uh-huh. being made so much better, being made so much better than the angels, than the angels, as he had by inheritance, inheritance, obtained a more excellent name than they. So now his name was inherited. Now, take me back to that Colossians. I'm about to get out your way. And whom we have redemption, uh-huh. Through his blood, uh-huh. Even the forgiveness of Even sin. Even forgiveness of sin, uh-huh. Who is the image of the invisible God. Who is the image of the what? The invisible God. Ah, God is what? Invisible. So if God is invisible, the only way that he can be visible is by a body. Yes. Bible talks about hidden things, but the only thing, only time you, it's like, you know what? You know, you know, there's devils all around, demons everywhere. But the only way they can be seen is in a person. Oh my God, that's right. That's it. That's it. Only way a demon or a devil can be seen 
is in a person because they're invisible. Oh, God. So demons and devils are invisible until they start lashing out and then start speaking out. They say, oh, hold on now. Hold your peace in the name of Jesus. They manifest it. And you say, well, how did devils become invisible? You know, devils at one point in time were angels. They were angels. And what they, I don't have time to teach this, but let me say this real quickly. What the angels would do was they would ascend and descend. When they would ascend, they would have a uh, celestial body. And then when they would descend, they would have a terrestrial body. When you have time, read uh, 1 Corinthians 15. You'll see what I'm talking about. So these are the bodies. But then... When they backslid, they lost their bodies. And so this is why they try to steal yours. And you know how they used to sing that song? Old folks would say, why don't you let him in? You know, that, that would have done. They waiting for y'all to say that. Every, every time you, <laughs> y'all ain't saying nothing. Open up your door, All right, they say, heist up your window. Open up the door. Why won't you let them come on in? Those spirits, they're ready to attach the body. I'm not teaching no demonology tonight, but I, I just wanted to say that. All right, read, uh-huh. Who is the image of the invisible God? Watch this. Now, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Uh-huh. The firstborn. The firstborn. Come on. Of every creature. Every creature. For by him were all things created. Hold on. For by him was everything what? Created. So everything was created by Jesus. Because he's God. Yes. Read, uh-huh. That are in heaven. Now, Jesus got the power to create things in heaven. Mm. And we're going to have a problem because in, in John chapter 1, it says that God, which was the word, created everything in heaven. <laughs> Now, only but one person can create everything. I can't say I create everything, and you say you create everything. One of us lying. <laughs> only way that I could say that I created everything, and you say that you created everything, we have to be the same person. That's right, man. <laughs> Good. Oh, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. All right, read, uh-huh. And that are in earth. That are in earth. Visible. Wait a minute. Jesus created visible things. Uh huh. And invisible. Wait a minute. <laughs> so now, what is invisible? We just said what, what is invisible. Devils are invisible. Who created devils? Jesus created the angels. Yes. Amen. Come on. What else is invisible? <laughs> Air is invisible. <laughs> Breath. Is invisible. Yes. Who is the life giver? Oh my God. So now, if God said that He's a life giver, and then this, this scripture is saying that Jesus is a life giver, then we got a problem. Either they're the same person or somebody lying. <laughs> but I know that the Bible says in Numbers that God is not a man, and then it says that He can't lie. Read, uh huh. I gotta get out your way. Whether they be thrones or dominions, whether they be thrones or dominions, or principalities, or principalities, or powers, or powers, all things were created by Him. All things, everything, you, your hair, your eyebrows, your yes. eyeballs, your nose, your ears, your mouth, everything was created by Him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know we got to have a creator because it's impossible for something, you know, for, for a big bang theory to happen. Come on. It's impossible for a big bang theory to occur and everybody got different DNA. Uh -huh. Everybody got a different fingerprint. Uh -huh. And I'm not talking about this index is different from this index. So you telling me that a bank theory ha got that much? Ain't no, you, 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 man, science ain't got that much power. <laughs> There's no way, and I love this thing about us, is that 
our optic nerve, the way our optic nerve work on your eyeball, there's a thin film that services how far you could see and how close you could see. And some of y'all wear glasses, some people don't, some people see far and others don't. And everybody film on their eyeball is different. <laughs> and then, can I say this? Because if it was a big bang theory, then everybody had that same blood type. That's right. Come on. But there's different blood types. Oh, All right, let me get out of that. All right, so now, <laughs> hallelujah, they be thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers, all things were created by him. Now, if everything was created by him, then we know that it's Jesus. Then we got to formulate a relationship with him. Yes. Learn how to treat him. Learn how to love him. Learn how to give him your first and your very best. Because mm -hmm. we like to do God. We give him secondhand stuff. And I can be honest with you. Can I be 100%? God don't like that secondhand stuff. Mm. He liked to be your first. In fact, one of the first men, uh, 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 the second men on earth that got in trouble because what he gave. Amen. Right. How God get upset about what they brought him? One brought first, and then the other one just grabbed something off the ground and brought it to him. <laughs> God said, hold on now, I don't have respect for what you're giving me. So my question today is, what you giving them? Do you dedicate as much time to God as you do your job? Oh, man, I'm, it's about to get critical right now. Do you as much? Because a lot of us, and, I, and I, I'm in school too, and we got some future lawyers in here, future yeah. doctors, future everything in, in this church. But guess what? I'm not doing no more. I, it, it, you, you can't pay me to do more homework. Then I read my Bible. Right. Okay, let me let me let me let, let me stand over here. You can't pay me to do more in a different realm or carnal state, carnal place. You can't you you, you can't pay me to do more, and I don't have no prayer life. And say I got a relationship with God. My God. You be on time to everything for your job. All right, let me move forward. But you don't you can't make it to your prayer time on time. You can't make it to your study time on time. You listen. When you go to school and you see that you're late for class. Oh, I'm late. I'm running late. I got to hurry up. I'm running late. Oh, I left my keys. Oh, God, I'm running. I'm running. Yep. You run late for church, you be like this. <laughs> Parlaying. Why? Why is it that the natural things get more of an urgency because it's more important to you? See, you're urgent about important things to you. If it ain't important to you, you're, they call it lackadaisical. It's real quiet. Let me move on. Because I, I, I can't treat God like, if I got a prayer time, I'm going to stick to what I'm, I'm going to pray to him. And, and see, see, the thing is, uh, Tori, is that if I set a prayer time for 6 a.m. In, in the morning, sometimes I get up, sometimes I won't. But if I have a schedule to be to work at 6 o'clock, why everybody looking strange like I'm speaking a different language? If I got to be to work at 6 o'clock, you getting up at 4.30. You trying to make sure everything's situated. And you got five alarms set. Oh, God. You got all these alarms set to make sure that you get up. But when it comes down to church, you got that one alarm. And they said, well, I, I, I guess I get a few extra minutes of sleep. Well, your, your mind ain't that way when it comes. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And see, Jesus said that he's the first and the last. Meaning that he want to be first on your mind and the last thing on your mind. 
What kind of man is that, boy? He said, hey, listen now. <laughs> I want you to be thinking about me when you get up and think about me when you're going to sleep. Watch more TV than you spend with God. First thing you do, wake up and turn, turn that news station on. Got your coffee. Yeah, all right, let me get out of there. Got your coffee watching the news, but ain't pray yet. Pulling up Facebook to see how many likes you got, and you haven't prayed yet. I'm telling you how to treat God. You don't treat God like that. He said, when it come down to me and my kingdom, I want you to seek me first. Give me uh, Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to close down, y'all, because I think I'm getting a lot of trouble here. So I'm going to close my Bible and stuff now. Matthew chapter 6 and 33. What does that say? But seek ye first. But seek ye what? First. God said, now, when it comes down to me, I don't want to be second. I don't want to be third. I don't want to be fourth. But when you come to seek me, I want you to seek me what? First. first. Then he tell you when you seek me, I want you to seek me early. Why, why would God say seek me early? Because he want to make sure that that's the first thing that you're doing. Yes. Amen. Woo. Seek me early. And he said, seek me while I may be found. Uh, if you mess around and you're going to miss it. I want you to seek me. Seek me early. Yes. Meaning, it, 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 it's not so much as an, I want you to seek me at 3 a.m., but he said seek me early, meaning that when you get up early, I need, a first I need to be the first thing on your mind. Amen. Amen. Not your emails and all that stuff. Checking to see what kind of grades you got on that test. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know how we think. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness and all these things. All these things shall be added unto you. Shall be added unto you. Meaning that you have aspirations, you have dreams, you have goals, you have all these list of things that you have. You got all of these things listed. He said, I give you all that, but you put me first. Put me first. That's right. Mm -hmm. So when you wake up, I want you to talk to me first. Amen. Amen. When you go to school, talk about me. I ain't talking about getting them people class and trying to take over or nothing like that. You're going to get kicked out of school. They're going to they gonna revoke your tuition. You might. Don't do that. But we talk about any and everything else. But it, it, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't talk, we don't talk about God. We don't talk about God enough. Yes. When are we going to start talking about God? When are we going to start dealing with God in that aspect of life? So when I'm learning how to treat God, and I'm closing, when I'm learning how to treat God, I'm going to be like David. If David had a conversation with people. He would say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. So I have a mindset of talking about God. And a lot of us are so ashamed of God. Because of how wicked this world is getting, people are ashamed to say that they're Christian. And it's just everybody going to this universe theory. Everybody going to this manifest theory. You don't have no, it has nothing to do with God anymore. And then the churches are just going right with them. Nobody preaching Jesus no more. Talking about how to get some money, how to get rich, how to do this, how to get this, how to get that. And not how to get Jesus. Not how to treat Jesus. So the church got to get back in order with God as well. Amen. Amen. So now in my closing, we have to learn how to talk to God, learn how to treat him. And treating him deals with your behavior. How are you behaving with God? When you didn't get the job that you really wanted, did you turn your back on him? See, see we don't know that God will not let you get that job because he got something else lined up for you. We get so mad at God, we, we say, well, if I don't get this, if this door don't open, I ain't praying no more. <laughs> and then God is trying to, and then he's still open the door for you because he's just such a gentleman. Yes. <laughs> he said, I, I know you want this door so bad, but I'm opening up this door. 
And we get so mad and upset with God when we don't get what we want when we want it. Don't treat God like that. Don't treat him like that. It's not, it's, 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 it's not good for you because God has feelings. Let us stand. Thank you, Lord. When it comes down to God and where God is trying to take the ministry and trying to take you, we got to make sure we know how to treat him. Make sure that we're, and, and, and let me say this, you got to be patient with God. And the reason why you got to be patient with God is because God don't live in a time zone. God don't live in a time zone. Only this world is controlled by time, but God isn't because he's outside of time. God is a God that don't operate by time. Can I tell you what God operate by? He operate by feeling. <laughs> God operate by what he feel. And your sincerity in how you treat God would it then return on how God will respond to you. But it's up to you. Where, where do you want to be in your relationship with God? How do you want to treat him? Then we got a question. Do I treat God fair like he's treated me? Because I was the one that was sinning. God ain't never sinned. <laughs> Out of all the things that you did, God still allowed you to remain. Hallelujah. Today I want to pray for a few, a few of you all that desire prayer. And if you feel like you've been in a place where you haven't been treating God right, and you want to be back restored or restored back to a place where you could amend the relationship, amend the way you were treating him, I want you to come. I want to pray with you today. I want to pray with you and believe that things will change instantly. That God, bring it down just a little bit, that God is formulating a change in the atmosphere. There's something that's about to take place in the restoration in your relationship with God. Young lady, come here. Let me talk to you for a second. The Lord said that he's restoring your relationship with him. You've been in a place where you're trying to get that understanding of God. You, you really desire a relationship with God. You really desire a closer walk with God. You just need an understanding of a lot of things. There's some things you're like, well, what does that mean? Or what is that? You be, and you, I see you just reading like, what, what does this mean? Or what does that mean? What, what is that? I, I need to understand that. And you're trying to get in a place for God where you could be better for him. And although the things that occurred that could have pulled you away from God, God said you got to heal. There's some stuff you got to heal from. Some past hurts and relationships that cause you to really be hurt and it puts you in a bad place with God. Because you almost thought, why, why God, why did you allow this to happen to me? Why did this happen to me? And it hurt you. But God said he's restoring you today. It's not by coincidence that you came here today. In fact, you was contemplating about coming. You didn't even know if you was going to come or not. You were thinking, thinking, should I go? But God said, your restoration is today. It's here today. Thank you, Jesus. You mind if I pray for you? Lord, touch her, bless her. God, give her what she needs in this hour. Restore her back to you, Lord. God, the understanding that she's looking for. God, I pray right now, God, that you open her up, open her eyes. Allow her to see, God. Oh, God, the direction that she needs. Lord, I pray, God, oh, God, that this 
issue that occurred in the past, God, that hurt her real bad. God, I pray, God, that you formulate the healing, God, that she could move on, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that she could trust you even more. Oh, God, I praise you, God. We thank you. God, we believe it to be done in Jesus' name. God bless you. Bless you. Thank you, God. Lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray today, God, that you touch us. Lord, open our eyes, God, that we can see, God, and understand how to treat you, Lord. God, we want to treat you better. We don't want to be in the same condition that we was before, God. We don't want to keep going back and forth, Lord. But God, in your name, Jesus, I pray that you open that way. Hallelujah. Make that way, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we need it. We need it, God. Hallelujah. Make that way, God. Make that way. Make that way, God. Make that way. Make that way, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we need it. Lord, today, today be the day, God. Today be the day, God. Restoration. Today be the day, God, to bring us back to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we don't want to be in a position or a place, God, where we're going back and forth. But God, open up that way, God. Make room, God. Make room for us, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Lord, we need you, God. We need you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we need you. We need you, Jesus. Lord, we need you, God. Bless you. Hallelujah, Jesus. For your glory, Jesus. God, allow us to have the victory, Jesus. God, we want to be victorious in this walk with you, God. Redemption has a name. Bless us, God. And it's Jesus. Bless us, God. Bless us, God. Tyra has a name. Bless us, God. And it's Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Listen, today and for the rest of this week, I want you to consistently analyze your treatment to God. Every day, just, eat, just, just assess your treatment. How, how did I treat God today? Did I pray when I wake up? Did I think about him when I woke up? I want to challenge everybody in here for that journey for this week. Assess your relationship with God. See how you treat them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 3. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peace in the you are Jesus. Hallelujah. And we tell you, thank you, Jesus. 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 Jesus.